to me, there's nothing more disgusting about liberal media, ideology, Marxism, than the idea that an idea could be outdated. Something about that just pisses me off. Because these are ideas. These are heuristics. This isn't like fucking MacBooks or iPads where there's a new one every fucking year. These shits are all about trial and error. About people voluntarily creating little social controls. Of course... Some of the times it's not very voluntary, it's more, um, institutional. However, there you go. The ideas can't, by nature, be outdated. Even hunter-gatherer ideas are just heuristics that have been built upon, expanded. We've taken that technology... That help that hunter gather society rise like fire, and we've utilized it in a more interesting way. Now we got, we don't even need fire, we got cell phone light. And shit like that. Oh yeah, we do need fire, but... The practicality and the use of technology has expanded. It's been built upon. Ideas by nature, follow the same rubric. You can't just assume that these ideas are old school, that they're outdated, that they have no relevancy, no truth to our kind of society. And then I realized that's kind of the nature of Marxism. Arini says that Marxism is the first ever disease that identifies in which the body or the nation identifies itself, its help, its positives, as negatives, as detriments, destroys it, and then utilizes the disease like it's the help. Reconstruction. It's all about breaking apart both the institutional and voluntary heuristics and then replacing them again and again with new ones. It's not really about expanding them. In a functional society, the harsh patriarchy is replaced with a softer one. The Roman pantheon is replaced with Christianity. And of course, you can argue that there are like there's going to be like a next replacement of that. That's even softer, ideally at least. And that's just how it works. The patriarchies become softer over time. Think about a lot of Hindu religions and what they believe. And their idea of the role of the wife. This shit has to mild down over time. You can't just kill the wife or have her commit suicide just because the husband died. That's a little, that's a little too much. So, of course, the patriarchy becomes soft over time, just like dads are less overbearing to their daughters because they know that their kids have to grow up and be the next generation. And that's the progression, loosening up, not destroying the relationship, not destroying those concepts, the heuristics, but building up the heuristics so that it actually fucking works. Ideas can't be outdated. That's one of those pet peeves I have. Because it, it just pisses me off. And I don't think people can understand from a day-to-day -day basis why. Why that would piss me off. I mean... Just thinking about it. Society is making a switch. Hopefully it's making a switch from being industrial and institutional to voluntary, more voluntarist. In terms of just how people relate to one another. I mean, God is dead. 
that's a common phrase that's been replaced with ideology. There's still that religious mode of thinking. And now we got people that are spiritual but not religious. You can argue that I'm part of that little group. And it's voluntary in a way because it's not based upon institutions. Voluntarism, in my opinion, is, isn't is just based upon no coercion, but it's also based upon things like that. No institution. And... This is the kind of thing with me. I can't just do what I did with anarchism and say, um, that means that we gotta get rid of all the fucking institutions. I don't wanna make people jump to that conclusion. What I'm saying is that that may be where society is leading once technology moves forward. The heuristic is building up and the patriarchy becomes softer. However, We're going through this Marxist phase where it's being replaced with the matriarchy. And because of the matriarchy and the matriarchal heuristics, uh, they're just like, it literally spirals and manipulates and destroys a society. The interesting thing is, and this is something I didn't realize before. I'm not the only minority on the white nationalist side. And by that, I mean, I'm not the only minority that hasn't seen that. I'm not the only minority that notices that there's something wrong with the way society is operating in terms of race and how that's basically leading to destruction of the white man and the destruction of the minority, too. I mean... We're basically putting ourselves in violent situations because we're atomized. We're disenfranchised as individuals, and so we're killing each other to get pussy. Because that's the only way to validate our own existence. Everyone's trying to validate their own existence. Otherwise, there'll be people like me when I was younger sitting at home all day and beating my meat. And you know what? That's a good lifestyle, but... One of these days, someone is going to show up, and they're going to try and pull you out of that nice little home where you're beating your meat every day, and they're going to enslave you. And that's what happened to me. And that's what I had to go through. And you don't want that. You don't want to deal with that kind of shit. I mean, I'm introverted, so there you go. I enjoy that kind of shit, but that doesn't mean I want to live a life of no struggle and then see the consequences of that. The ramifications of that shit. So, there's people that are, specifically is one black user that spoke about how, essentially, he's trying to use segregation to like, because he lives in Atlanta, Georgia, and, with these charter schools, there's going to be some form of segregation. He's all for it. Because he notices what's happening. And he feels like the social order would be at least improved upon. Marginally. And I think that's so too. I think that would help. And there's also true women's right activists. These are people that... Women that have an interest, a vested interest in their feminine side, the rights of women, the rights of women to be women, instead of being feminists who want to turn women to disenfranchised beings that don't really have any identity to actually look forward to. Nothing to be proud of, they're neither male or female. Uh, that's how they describe it, where... True women's right activism is based upon actually having women protect their own right of being feminine. Protect their own right of being real strong women. It's like, and it makes you wonder. As in, 
someone that studied Austrian economics for a while. Well, I can't really say I studied it for a while because watching a bunch of YouTube videos isn't the same thing as actually knowing what it is and actually getting in depth and reading the books and shit. However, someone that notices a lot about that shit, best way to describe it is that it'd be like saying that you're for free markets just because you support capitalism, which drives upon free markets, yet it's like the ugly side of free market economics. It's not necessarily fucking horrifying, but it's not the same thing. Being feminist isn't the same thing as actually being for the rights of women, protecting your individual rights. And this is where my old thesis of liberty versus freedom comes in. You can feel free, empowered, out of your shackles, but you're not really out of them. Where when you're actually given these social and political protection, and you escape that fucking cage, that's liberty. That's legit. You get legit liberties and things of that nature. That's what I think uh, feminism does. It enslaves women, and then it says that. Uh, and of course, you got masculism. You got the fake ass MRAs. And then what they do is they do the reverse. They do that same shit to men. They disenfranchise them and make them something that's neither male nor female. Instead of protecting our masculinity. Which is horrifying. The little I have now, since all the, adre the, all the testosterone in my body has been replaced with adrenaline. You could literally grab my dick, slam that shit to the fucking wall... And I wouldn't feel a damn thing. It'd actually feel kind of good, actually. So that's sort of like my view on all of this. Oh, and for the black eye thing, uh, again, I'm just trying to say, what am I trying to get out of all of this? This, these past two videos, I've been going through a multitude of different topics and. What should you take out of all of this in general? Well, keep in mind, hope is ever present. By no means shit, though. United States will fall, but as long as mankind remains and everything that we've built upon, all those little rules and shit, all those little heuristics, as long as those remain, then we could go to that next level. We can go to a more voluntarist stage. And that'd be pretty good. Because at that point, then... It'd be a sort of renaissance of growth. And, of course, post garcia economics. And things of that nature. We start to thrive as human beings. We Sure, we gotta go through a few little issues... How are people in the bottom going to survive? I think I already have my solution, which is basically a little zeitgeist. Spiritualism minus religion. You can put the special have-nots, kind of like how there's freaks that live in the countryside. There's also going to be freaks that live in the cities and the urban side places. Just generalizations. Moreover... Mankind needs to struggle. It needs to compete with one another. It needs to form little cliques. It needs bro time. We we need that. We need to implement that. That conflict and that brotherhood. Those are both the elements of basically a society that I'd want to be in. Conflict and brotherhood. Protagonists and antagonists and the assistants and the little help for those protagonistic characters. I actually want to start my own country, now that I think about it. I want to start a country based upon bros, based upon friends getting together and starting a civilization, having fun, 
doing stupid shit, being young, being youthful. That sounds like a good deal. Suck my dick.